Hello, and welcome to my show, Searching for Integrity. My name really is John Smith, and I'm searching for people with integrity. Why? Because our country suffers from IDD, Integrity Deficit Disorder. Today, we have as our guest, Mr. Douglas Mulhall, and his book, the author, Discovering the Nature of Longevity, Restoring the Heart and Body by Targeting hit, Hidden Stress. Got the last part there. What do you say? Glad to have you. It's great to be here, John, and thank you very much for inviting me onto the show. Uh, that's, uh, I've been studying this, and... Uh, it's um, quite interesting, I would say. Very so, very so. Um, are you in the process, let me get you here, of uh, your cardio professional? Is that what something would be? Absolutely not. Okay. I am not a doctor. Uh, my expertise is... Over the past uh, 30 years, I have trained designers in how to keep toxic substances out of products and buildings so that people can have healthy products and healthy buildings. And I have managed a scientific institute that specializes in a methodology uh, for doing this that is recognized by the United States Environmental Protection Agency. So that is I'm coming at this from the direction of these hidden stresses that you mentioned uh, in the subtitle of the book. And one of those hidden stresses uh, is indeed uh, toxic metals that we're going to be talking about uh, in the show today. Well, um, I'm interested in that just as well. Um, the, uh, the, the problems, I guess, that people have today have a lot of reliance upon um, all they've done it every day, every way, and they really don't have somebody talking to them about their so different way to get well. That's, That's your job. Correct. That's going yes. to be your job. Well, actually, um, I make a point of saying I, I don't give medical advice, but I do give people uh, information, and that's what the book is about. It's about providing information to people about hidden stresses, and I call them hidden stresses because... You don't feel them, you don't smell them, uh, you can't sense them. Uh, right. They start at birth and they eat away at you until you get sick. And this happens to all of us, according to the American Heart Association, who have just issued a scientific statement mm -hmm. about these hidden stresses, saying that um, these toxic metals are a new major heart disease uh, risk. And John, before we get into that, I'm so happy that you know, you're the first show that has addressed this issue of integrity. And I want to describe where integrity uh, comes into this because the New York Times actually just a few weeks ago uh, published the results of an investigation into integrity in surgery that is being done on millions of mm -hmm. heart patients around mm -hmm. the United States. Mm -hmm. And what this, uh, this investigation showed was that many, many, many surgeries are being performed unnecessarily on patients with a form of heart disease known as peripheral artery uh, disease, which is a blockage of the arteries, usually in the legs, but it can be in, in the arms as well. And the, um, the, 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 the surgical uh, industry, not, not as a whole, but there are many, many examples of where these surgeries have been performed simply for profit um, against the interests of the patient. Now, why do I say that this is against the interests of the patient? Uh, here's an example of why it's against the interests of patient. Now, keep in mind about 1.5 million serious vascular operations under, are taken every year for this form of peripheral artery disease, which is especially nasty in diabetic 
uh, heart patients. Now, in 2017, which is roughly five or six years ago, um, physicians, heart cardiologists at Mount Sinai Medical Center in Miami, Florida, uh, headed up by the chief of cardiology at Columbia University, uh, used a therapy that had been proven safe in a $35 million National Institutes of Health funded uh, clinical trial. Uh, and they used this on their uh, peripheral artery disease patients. It was a small cadre uh, after the large clinical trial was done on, on thousands of patients. Uh, they chose a small cadre of peripheral artery disease patients who were scheduled for imminent amputation of their feet and their toes were black and their circulation had been cut off. So, uh, and 25% of all amputees die within the first year. So this is uh, a quality of life issue, major quality of life issue, and very painful and very traumatic for uh, what has been now millions of people. And uh, there are millions more surgeries that uh, do radical surgery to uh, replace the arteries uh, in those legs. So after 40 weeks of infusions with this uh, therapy once a week, uh, something uh, unusual happened. The patients kept their legs. They kept their feet. They were walking around on them instead of hobbling or being in wheelchairs. Their toes were pink and the gangrene had healed on their legs. This was uh, the, the, the this was 70% of the patients who completed the study. The other 30% who didn't complete it actually uh, either died or um, had radical uh, surgery and lost mm -hmm. uh, their limbs. So... Here we have a situation where five or six years ago, it was shown and published in peer-reviewed publications that people with very serious peripheral artery disease can have their limbs saved by a non-invasive infusion uh, therapy. Why are millions of patients not being told about this? This is a question of integrity. Because if this was a therapy that was offered by a major pharmaceuticals company and it had that result in a clinical study, you can be guaranteed that uh, people would be running to it uh, mm -hmm. for special cases, uh, for what's known as um, e extreme uh, cases and special access under the FDA regulations. Um, and the FDA would be encouraged them. Not so in this case. And the question is, uh, why? Well, we come back to the integrity question. And on your website, you talk about the relationship between finance and integrity. Well, guess what? This therapy doesn't make money for big pharma companies. Um, it is, uh, in, a, in a study, it was shown to be 80% less expensive than the standard of care surgery uh, that is uh, carried out. Um, and hospitals depend on this standard of care surgery, many hospitals, uh, for their life's blood uh, financing. So here we have a situation where actually integrity has gone out the window. I'm sorry to say that, but it has really gone out the window. And as a result, uh, millions of people are suffering. And that's why I wrote this book. I wrote this book to bring attention to these types of uh, therapies. Now, there's one other very interesting thing about this, and that is that when these peripheral artery disease patients, when they were getting better, mm -hmm. large amounts of toxic metals that I talked about at the top of the show came out, they peed it out in their urine. So this infusion therapy was actually removing these toxic metals. And as the amount of toxic metals diminished, in the patient's tissue, they got better. So we have 100 years of studies showing that toxic metals trigger heart disease. There is, there is no question about this. But now we had the proof going the other way around, the proof in the pudding. And that was clinical proof that when those toxic metals are removed from patients' tissue, they get better. So we have the proof going both ways. Why? is standard care not galloping towards this therapy? Old money.
Yeah, it's a combination of money. And as the American Heart Association pointed out, and I'd like to be clear, this uh, uh, statement about heavy metals, toxic metals, we're talking about cadmium, lead, um, and arsenic, which are all through our environment. First, the American Heart Association said, everybody is exposed to this. And this starts from birth, by the way, and it right. accumulates, it builds up in people. Right. So right. that's number one. And number two, amazingly, the American Heart Association also said that standard caregivers are usually not trained in how to treat, test for, or diagnose this, despite the fact that integrative cardiologists uh, and naturopathic doctors are actually quite well trained in how to do this. So it's not that the training doesn't exist, it's just that the standard of care doesn't seem to have caught up yet with the American Heart Association's uh, findings. So it's an amazing situation that we have today here. You know, on one hand, you have the New York Times showing, and I want to emphasize the reaction to the New York Times story was amazing because, of course, the people who were making the most money from the surgery objected vociferously to the story and said, no, it's not true. These patients need this. But guess what? Some of the medical associations said, sorry to say this is going on and it has to change. So that was what was interesting about the New York Times uh, story. And then here we have on the other side, how do we know that doctors are not flocking to this? Because the doctors at Mount Sinai uh, Hospital, who by the way, also performed the previous $35 million NIH clinical trial that reduced all causes of mortality in diabetic heart patients by 41%, say that no one has come running to their door uh, with patients uh, who are about to lose their limbs. Instead, they're just cutting them off. So that's what we have today. Well, I suggest something for you. My doctor is the VA, Veterans Administration. And they they are all in and all out of for the soldiers, for the veterans. And they'll be the first one in, in large, uh, they're in across the country everywhere almost except for maybe arizona i'm not sure but uh, they're my doctor and they look after me i get phone calls from them Great. so that Why would be they something using this therapy may they, they probably don't know much about it yes they know. do they're not using it no nope. the number of the va representatives have said this is voodoo medicine earlier um, uh, a few years ago. Um, they're not up on the science. Um, I did a show uh, with one of the uh, the, uh, the representatives of, of veterans. Um, and he said, it's the same problem. The, the veterans can't get access to this therapy with the VA. The VA doesn't cover it. And it would be great if you could talk to your VA doctors and say, why aren't you using this? Uh, this has been proven safe in a clinical trial. And uh, so what, what's, what's the problem here? I think that would be a great thing to do. That's why I wrote the book is to encourage people to become proactive and actually uh, get in there and do something uh, with their physicians and, and ask them about it. Well, I will do that because I, uh, I, I have my cardiologist at the VA and I'm seeing him about every six months. Uh, but now I've got five months to go. I'll, I'll see if I can't speed that up. Um, that would be great if you could do that. And I'd love to hear the results um, yes. because, you know, some cardiologists are open to this and other cardiologists say it's voodoo medicine. The really interesting thing is that uh, Dr. Hervasio Lamas, who's the chairman of cardiology at Columbia University, uh, he got the NIH to do this clinical trial because he wanted to prove that this infusion therapy didn't work. <laughs> That's why they did it. He had a patient come to him and say, should I use this therapy? And uh, he said, nope. He said, it's not safe. He said, it doesn't work. And when he was driving home that night, he realized he had absolutely no scientific basis for saying that. It's what he'd been told by other doctors. Uh -huh. And so the more he looked into it, the more he realized that there was an absence of uh, randomized, double-blinded clinical evidence uh, to demonstrate whether or not this actually worked. And so being the skeptic that he was, he said, okay, uh, so many people are using this already. You know, We're gonna put this to the test 
And if it doesn't work, we're really going to tell people to stop uh, using it. Uh, well, that was in 2008. And in 2014, they unblinded the results. And no one was more surprised than Dr. Lamas, by his own admission, um, and also the Journal of the American Heart Association that published his results when they found this 41% reduction in all causes of mortality uh, among diabetic heart patients. Now, why diabetic heart patients? It's really interesting. And there's a good reason uh, for this. It's not 100% proven, uh, but it makes sense. And that is that um, toxic metals that build up in you uh, do a very nasty thing to your glucose. They oxidize it. And anybody who has diabetes knows that oxidized glucose byproducts are not good for you. <laughs> They're not good for you at all. And in fact, um, here's an example of what they do to the tissue in your body. What I'm holding up here for the people who uh, may be not seeing the video, but are just listening. On the right-hand side here, what I'm showing is uh, the elastic fibers in arteries that are in a six-year-old, nice and healthy and smooth. You can see them there. These elastic fibers are what allow your arteries and your heart to expand and contract billions of times in your lifetime. On the other side here, we have these frazzled, gnarly, ugly looking things in a 90 year old. And that's what happens to the elastic fiber in all of our arteries. And a lot of this is due to the buildup of these uh, hidden uh, toxic uh, metals and uh, other hidden toxic stresses that I describe uh, in the book. So we want to stop this from uh, happening. Right. And so, uh, so that's what they found. They, uh, they, they found that uh, the causes of death from all causes, not just heart disease, from right. all causes in diabetics were reduced. And um, they theorized that it's because as the heavy metals are getting taken out of the tissue, the glucose patterns, metabolisms are restored to normal. It's, it's an amazing finding. Well, um, put those pictures up again, would you please? Sure. There we go. There we go. Yeah. All right. Yes. Yeah. It's on the right is on your right. The viewers is on the left. Indeed. All they need to know is this one side here is really smooth and the next side is all beaten up. <laughs> that's right. And this is the elastic fiber that's in your yeah. arteries. Yeah. All right. Most people have never heard of it. Uh, they think that collagen is the stuff that makes things run. They're told that, and it's incorrect. The stuff that gives elasticity to your skin and your arteries is this elastic fiber. And this elastic fiber is especially damaged uh, by these hidden stresses, such as these uh, toxic metals. And that's, uh, I read about that. It's the elas elastin. Yes, it's called elastin fiber. Elastin is actually, without getting too technical about it, uh, the protein that becomes part of this very, very complex uh, fiber. Elastin is the longest lasting protein in your body. And uh, its degradation is one of the major causes of why we age. I mean, imagine if all the elastic in your body is degrading and you start to sag and you start to get wrinkles and the same thing's happening inside your uh, arteries. That's not good. And that's what's happening to all of us. And that probably is one of the main reasons why there's a 120 year ceiling on our healthy longevity. More people are living longer, but they're not, they're, they haven't broken through this 120 year uh, ceiling of lifespan. And this is, a, this is one major reason why. Now, the good news is that um, there have been discoveries of how to repair this fiber. So the infusion therapy that I'm talking about um, removes the metals from that fiber and so prevents the further degradation. But there's another therapy and I work with scientists at Clemson University who discovered the substance that actually repairs this. And uh, this is actually entering uh, clinical studies right now. There, a first in human clinical study has been performed for aneurysms that affect 10 million uh, Americans. And the preliminary results have been very, very promising. There's no cure for aneurysms. There's no effective therapy. Right. Uh, and when they burst, they're often fatal. But now this new therapy with this new substance has actually been able to um, 
uh, prevent bursting of aneurysms by slowing the growth of the aneurysms. It's it's a great result. So, uh, and back to the integrity question, John, uh, the people who are doing this, you know, the Dr. Lamases of the world and uh, the Naren Vivaharis, uh, Dr. Vivahari discovered the substance that restores this elastin. You know, they took on uh, a lot of skepticism and they took on a lot of heavy criticism and they held their ground and they have integrity. And I salute them uh, for having the guts to continue and also to Dr. Lamas for having the guts to admit that he was wrong. Uh, this was, really took something because, you know, when was the last time you heard your colleague, cardiologist say he was wrong about something? <laughs> <laughs> so it's a very hopeful <laughs> message. And, you know, that's exactly what I describe in the book, Discovering the Nature of Longevity. And the reason I wrote the book, also it has 700 scientific references. And by the way, Dr. Lamas wrote the foreword to the book. So right. it's got some credibility to it. And um, it's right now it's, you know, number one bestseller on Amazon. But but aside from all of that, the main purpose here is so people can inform themselves. I didn't see this information anywhere else put into one place. And that's why I wrote the book. All right. Now, I have a simple question for you. If I go to my cardiologist and I describe to him my best infusion therapy, is he going to understand it? Is this common? Yes, it's known as chelation therapy. And any doctor who's listening now will guarantee that half your audience just turned off your program because uh, many uh, conventional, especially older physicians, are not up on the science. They're not aware of the clinical trial results from the NIH. They're not aware of the peripheral artery disease uh, uh, treatment uh, results. And they do like Dr. Lamas did in 2008. Uh, they say, this is voodoo medicine. It's unsafe. It could be dangerous, all of which has been disproven. Uh, so, And this is the problem generally with our sick care system. It's very slow to mm. recognize these new uh, new therapies for a good reason in, in some cases, and that is to uh, you know safeguard the safety of patients. And that is true, and that's why this clinical trial was performed to show the safety of this chelation therapy. So the answer to your question is, if your cardiologist is well-informed, he or she uh, might say, hey, let's have a look at this. Uh, if he's not well-informed, he'll say, if you try this, you can walk out the door and never go away. And in fact, uh, one of my neighbors down the road had that happen to him. Um, and uh, also Peter Bartelli, a pilot who I know, uh, who flunked his FEA test because his stent plugged up, had uh, his cardiologist tell him the same thing. Both of those guys did the same thing. They fired their cardiologist and went to another one. They just said, okay, you're fired. That's it. If you don't want me to come back, I'm not coming back. So they went to cardiologists who did this work and they got good results. So um, I'm not saying fire your cardiologist. First, make the effort to inform them, but always go for a second opinion. For sure, for sure. Um, there's a lot of good here. And uh, is your book sellable now? Oh, yes. It's, okay. uh, as I said, it's uh, uh, it, it debuted at uh, uh, the number one uh, hot new release on Amazon and bestseller in seven categories. And today it's still a bestseller in one or two categories, which I'm very happy about. Right. Uh, and uh, that's because of shows like yours, where people hear about it, they get informed and they go and buy the book. Right. Right. And so this is more than a sales pitch for the book. Uh, this is a sales pitch for informing yourself and getting the information, getting the scientific references. Um, and believe me, it's a small price to pay. Well, I'm going to order up and I'm going to take a book down to the VA is what we're going to do. That's my plan. Great. Yeah, and, let's uh, do that. The more people that do it, the better. Yeah. 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 It's, it's amazing uh, how the background still drags along and drags, drags along. Yeah. And, you know, Scott Deluzio, who uh, does uh, a, a show called Drive On, he's doing the same thing. So the more people that do this with the VA, uh, the better. And actually, there's another show that I did on this uh, with someone who supports um, uh, veterans. And, uh, she actually has a real estate show. 
And she's also going uh, to the VA to ask them about this. So the more people that do this, right. uh, the better. The VA is the perfect place because a lot of veterans have been exposed to toxic metals in the field. I can give you one example, firing ranges. Uh, you know, the smoke that comes out of the gun, the smoke that comes out of the gun is the result of the powder shooting out the back. There's a little hole in the back of the bullet. Um, and when it shoots out the back of the bullet, it brings part of the lead with it. And you're inhaling that every time you fire the, the weapon. And that's why uh, shooting ranges are highly contaminated with lead. So people, especially soldiers who have been practicing with a lot of rounds, are being contaminated by this lead big time. And by the way, the medical journal, The Lancet, this month, uh, produced another study separately from the American Heart Association that concluded that the impacts of lead on uh, deaths in heart disease and on the IQ of children have been drastically understated to the tune of 600%. And that actually lead is a leading cause of heart disease ahead of smoking and ahead of cholesterol. So mm -hmm. The more that we're looking into these toxic metals, especially for, for veterans, the more we're seeing that this is the monster in the closet. It's not the only gonna, monster, but it's a big yeah. one. Well, I'm going to buy a bu book from Amazon as soon as we end this session. And it should be deliverable tomorrow. And I'm going to take it and take it to his office at the VA in Tucson, Great. Arizona. And make sure, make, make sure to show him the foreword by Dr. Lamas. Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> that, that that's do where that. you should start. Well, now that I'm going to go buy one, what about at least my audiences? Where do they go? Uh, sorry, uh, John, could you repeat the question? I I didn't uh, uh, yeah, hear where, it. Your, your book, where, where do they go to buy it? Is ah. it only Amazon? Uh, you can go to a bookstore and ask for it, and they can uh -huh. they can order it for you. Uh, so mm -hmm. any bookstore should be able to order for you. It's got an ISBN number, so mm -hmm. they should be able to get it, um, you know, anywhere in the United States. Um, but you'll get it, you know, quickest, fastest, and probably less expensively um, on uh, on Amazon. And I, I do that also uh, so that people, you know, have a central place to go to. But, you know, go to your local bookstore and ask for it, and they should be able to uh, uh, to get it for you. Absolutely. Well, I'll do that, and it's it's something I can like and understand as well. Um, that, I that's thank a you. good point that you bring up, John. What's I that? didn't write this book for doctors. I wrote this book for people who don't have a medical background. Although a right. lot of doctors I know have purchased the book, uh, but I wrote this for people who you know want to understand uh, clearly. And there's a lot more in the book than just heart disease and metals. There's all kinds of stuff that people haven't heard about before right. that's really interesting, including this elastic that I just talked about Great. and a lot of other things that we won't go into today. Thank you again, Douglas. I'm glad uh, to meet you and I'm glad you came on to our, our audience. And uh, I want to ask my, um, my audience tuning in, searching for integrity. And uh, so long and happy trails to all.